Okay, so this is the mock exam for the organic material on um, on Blackboard that I've taught you. Doesn't include any of the inorganic stuff, so you'll have to speak to your lecturers for those to get that. But I've just thought I'd go through the answers with you, so you can use it for revision purposes. <clears throat> okay, so select. The systematic name for the following compound. We will notice that there is a chiral centre in this molecule. Um, so depending on what answers you're given, you may or may not have to work out if that's R or S. But first of all, number the atoms from the most oxidised carbon, which is the carboxylic acid. So you have one, two, three, four. So four names. For, sorry, four carbons, it's going to be based on butane of some description. So based on that, that means we can get rid of D and C as an option, because they're both based on propane. Then you can see that you have an amino group, an amine, on carbon 2. So it will be 2 amino butane something in this case butanoic acid and you can see that A is 2 amino butanoic acid S is 3 so we can get rid of that so we don't even have to work out if it's R or S so the answer there is 2 amino butanoic acid but for your own revision see if you can work out the absolute configuration of that chiral centre to see if it is indeed R question 2 Morphine is a natural product with analgesic properties. How many chiral centres are present in morphine? Well, remember, in this course, when we draw a chiral centre, you draw two bonds in the plane of the paper. You draw a wedged bond, which means it's coming out of the paper towards you. And you draw a dashed bond, which means it's going into the paper or under the desk. So we're really looking for things with four different groups. Remember, A is not equal to B, is not equal to C, is not equal to D, so that would be a chiral centre. And usually you, these are given away by the fact that it has a wedge or a dash on it. So here you would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 chiral centres. So here the answer is B. Now, for your own revision purposes, you should go through and make sure that each of the carbons that I've circled here have four different groups on them. Um, notice I haven't circled the nitrogen because nitrogen uh, isn't chiral here. Um, so we only circle the carbons and there's five of them. Okay, moving on to question three. This is to do with tamoxifen and the correct geometries of the double bonds labelled A and B. So don't confuse which one's A and which one's B because you'll mix the answers up. Um, we're going to use the priority rules here. So the same priority rules that you use to determine R and S for chiral centres. And remember that you split the double bonds. So if we do A first, we split that double bond. And we give priority to the two atoms attached. Now they're both carbon, so they both have the same atomic number. But if you go through the rules, you'll see that the aromatic ring takes priority over the ethyl group. And they're moving down to the other, where they're both benzene rings. So these two atoms have the same priority. These two have the same priority. These two have the same priority. And it's only when you get to the power position we we'll substitute, substitute the power position to there, that this benzene ring has a hydrogen on it, whereas this benzene ring has an oxygen on it. So oxygen has a higher priority than hydrogen, so this side will take priority 1 over this side, which takes priority 2, and you notice that both the, high, uh, both the highest priority numbers are on the same side. So A is a Z double bond, so that means we can get rid of B, and we can get rid of e, C as an option, because A is Z.
Then we do the same for B, we split the double bond down the middle. Don't forget there's hydrogens on here, so this is more straightforward when there's two hydrogens on the double bond, because if the hydrogens are trans, then the double bond will be trans, or, or E. But just to go through the priority rules, oxygen takes priority over hydrogen, carbon takes priority over hydrogen, and again, the ones are on opposite sides, so that is an E dual bond. So we're looking for the answer with Z for A, and B is E. So the answer there is D rather than A. Okay, using the same priority rules then, now we're going to apply the absolute configuration to this chiral centre labelled I. So we're looking at this one in particular uh, in penicillin G. So if we're talking about absolute configuration, we're not talking about double bonds E and Z. So straight away you can get rid of E and Z answers C and D. So now we need to work out if it's an R or an S chiral centre. Well, here, it's exactly the same as we've done in lectures. The hydrogen will be priority 4. The sulphur has a higher atomic number than nitrogen, so that will be 1. Nitrogen has a higher atomic number than carbon, so that will be 2. And your carbon, which is this carbon here, will be 3. The hydrogen is going back, and so we're in the correct orientation, we go from 1 to 2 to 3 in a clockwise fashion. So this particular cow centre is R. So we can get rid of S as, an example, uh, as the answer. Question 5. Correct, the correct statement. So just work through each one to see if it's correct or not. Remember, we're looking for the correct statement. Electrophilic sites. Remember, an electrophile likes electrons. Electrons are negatively charged, so if something likes negative charge, itself must be a positive, positive so, or, or partially positive. So electrophiles have electron deficiency, so therefore they are not electron rich, so that's wrong. And then the opposite is true for nucleophiles. Nucleophiles are electron rich, so they're not electron deficient, so that's wrong. And then if you remember what a carbocation is, a carbocation is a carbon with a positive charge on it. So that is electron deficient because it's a positive charge. So they're not electron rich. And a carbanion is a negatively charged species, so that they are electron rich. Okay, so for this question, you need to know the equation. So alpha D equals alpha divided by CL. And units are very important. So remember the units for concentration are grams per mil. And length here is in decimeters. Okay, so if we plug those equations into the um, those numbers into the equation, we get um, alpha is plus 0.31. We have a concentration of 30 milligrams in two mil, which means there's only 15 milligrams in one mil. Because remember, this is per mil. So 15 milligrams in one mil is equal to 15 times 10 to the minus 3 grams in one mil. Because remember, we need units of grams per mil. So now we have 1 15 times 10 to the minus 3 grams per mil. So that will be 15 times 10 to the minus 3 times length. Well, 1 decimeter is 10 centimeters, so the length there is 1. So we have put the numbers in 0.31, just doing this on the calculator as I expect you would do, divided by 15 to the minus 3, 
and that gives you an answer of plus roughly plus 21 okay and so because our alpha is plus our answer must be plus so in this case you can get rid of b straight away um, if you have these units wrong so if you get your concentration wrong or your path length wrong then you may get one of the answers c or d but in this particular case the answer is plus 21 so even if you get the right answer don't assume it's correct you must get your units right so units are important for that question question seven again we're looking for the correct statement regarding stereochemistry okay so stereochemistry is R and S cal centers E and Z dual bonds and this is something that you will have to have remembered from your lecture notes so E and Z geometrical isomers have the same biological properties well that's wrong because in the lectures we talked about um, different isomeric double bond isomers having different properties and I gave you some examples R and S enantiomers have the same biological properties well that's wrong as well because again in lectures we gave some examples of uh, molecules which smell of lemons and oranges or spearmint and caraway we also talked about thalidomide so different enantiomers having different biological properties when they interact with your body c r and s enantiomers have the same physical properties that means except for the direction of the plane of polarized light well yes we talked about at boiling point and melting point and everything like that being the same so they do have the same physical chemical properties except for the direction of the rotation of plane polarized light well that's true as well because one an antimer will rotate the light clockwise and another one will the other one will rotate anti-clockwise so that's true the e and z geometrical isomers have the same physical chemical properties well again that's not true because i gave you uh, examples of dual bond isomers where one is a liquid at room temperature one is a solid so they have different physical properties so this answer for seven is c and then finally last few questions we're now looking for the incorrect statement so please don't confuse yourself there okay elimination of hbr from one okay one bromohexane what's that well first of all you need to know what that molecule looks like so let's draw hexane one two three four five six with a bromine and carbon one so this is one bromohexane if we eliminate hbr from it then the product you get is that one two three four five six okay it's hex one ene so elimination of hbr from bromohexane gives hex one ene as the major product okay so that's true okay oxidation of a tertiary alcohol gives a carboxylic acid well there's an example of a tertiary alcohol and you can remember from the lecture notes they can't be oxidized primary alcohols go through to the acid secondary alcohols go through to the ketone tertiary alcohols can't be oxidized so oxidation of a tertiary alcohol gives a carboxylic acid that's wrong so we found an incorrect answer but let's just check with c and d to make sure it's definitely we haven't made a mistake reaction of an alkyl halide okay so a simple alkyl halide there would be ethyl iodide with a carboxylate salt okay so here is a carboxylic acid as the let's say the sodium salt gives an ester okay well that mechanism would be the negative charge would attack the delta plus and kick out iodine and you would end up with the ethyl ester plus sodium iodide so reaction of an alkyl halide with a carboxylic salt does give an ester so that's true and finally acid chlorides undergo nucleophilic substitution reactions well we know that's true because there are lots of examples in the lecture notes we also made aspirin in the lab practicals using an activated acid so that's true as well so the incorrect answer here is b so the answer is b question nine hybridization 
Okay, so let the hybridization of the atoms marked A and B in fluoxetine. Okay, so remember we talked about the types of bonds attached to the atoms. Well, oxygen only has single bonds attached to it. So we can say that that is sp3 hybridized. This carbon here is part of a benzene ring which has double bonds. So B is sp2. So we need A is sp3. And B is sp2. So here the answer is B. Okay. But be very careful when you come to eliminate the wrong answers. And then finally, question 10. Simvastatin is a member of the drug class called the statins and it is used to control elevated cholesterol levels. Okay. Which of the following statement is incorrect about simvastatin? Okay. Well, quick part A. Cyclic ester 1, okay, so this cyclic ester here, which is called a lactone, is electrophilic. Well, yes, it is electrophilic because we know that this carbon is delta plus and can be attacked by nucleophiles such as water in the body. And so water is nucleophile, the ester is an electrophile, so that's correct. Simvastatin contains eight cow centers. Okay, so again, we're looking for groups of carbons with four different groups attached. And again, they can be often identified easily by the wedges and the dashes. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so there's only seven cow centers there, so it does not contain eight, it contains seven. Alcohol 2 here is nucleophilic, or yes, remember, in the same way that water has a lone pair of electrons and is nucleophilic, this oxygen has two lone pairs of electrons and is also potentially nucleophilic, so that's true. And the side chain 3 here is lipophilic, well it only contains alkyl chains, very greasy, no polar functional groups at all, so yes, that side chain 3 is lipophilic. So in this case, the answer is B.